Hey students, Miss Pavlicek here. I'm at the Mill Pond Reservoir in Burlington, and I'm standing in a habitat called a vernal pool. A vernal pool is an area of the forest floor that fills up only in the springtime. Actually, the word vernal means spring. Where does this water come from? Well, we have an enormous amount of rain and the melting snow from the winter fills up the lower area of the forest floor. A vernal pool isn't just any puddle that's in the forest. It has to be a nice large body of water that makes a safe habitat or home for many living things. Vernal pools are very special because they are seasonal, but also at the end of the spring, early summer, something happens to the vernal pool. Slowly and slowly, the water disappears and it dries up. That's due to the warming temperatures that cause the water to evaporate and turn from a liquid into a gas up in the air. Okay, students, it's time to explore in the vernal pool. We'll learn what kinds of living things are in this habitat. How do those living things find food and water? And where do they get their shelter to stay safe? Ready, let's go. <laughs> Observe how I had to use my net walking around in the vernal pool. I walked carefully through the water with the net and also brought the net to the base of plants and the leaves that were covering the bottom of the vernal pool. Let's see what I found. Plants. This spongy plant is called moss. It absorbs and holds on to a lot of water for living things. It also provides food and shelter. Here you can see two different kinds of plants in the vernal pool. You can see the feather-like plant called ferns, and you can also see what's called skunk cabbage with the big, broad, green leaves. Another plant found in the vernal pool is duckweed. It makes tiny little leaves that cover the surface of the vernal pool in late summer. It also makes a great shelter for animals to stay safe. Other vernal pool plants include a variety of shrubs and trees, grass-like plants named sedge, and algae that floats around in the water in the vernal pool. To review, plants provide an important source of food, shelter, space, and shade, or the correct temperature for animals and living things in the vernal pool. Our next vernal pool observation is going to be about shelter. Shelter can provide a safe place to stay away from predators and also a place to stay in the shade for the correct temperature or to stay out of the sun. You may observe that I'm searching around fallen trees or logs in the vernal pool. These provide great shelter to stay safe for the living things that live there. The most important form of shelter in a vernal pool is at the bottom. I'd like you to observe very closely where these living things shelter when I slowly approach them. Pay close attention. Tadpoles! I hope you observe the tadpole sheltering under the fallen leaves. Fallen leaves at the bottom of the vernal pool are important for all living things to shelter. And for our last vernal pool observation, we're going to explore animals. 
The first animal you're going to observe is a male mallard duck. Notice how he's dipping his bill into the leaves to find food in the vernal pool. The other animals you're going to observe I caught with my net while I was in the water at the vernal pool. Be sure to use your good observation skills during the next parts of our video. One of the things about vernal pools is it's a safe area for animals to come and lay their eggs, especially animals like amphibians. You're gonna notice in this water when I stick my hand in very gently, there are some tadpoles swimming around. These are most likely wood frog tadpoles. And you're also going to see this giant green blob in the center. This giant blob are salamander eggs. Each egg is covered with a protective layer of jelly. The salamander eggs are found attached to logs, branches, and other brush that's at the bottom of the vernal pool. If you look closely, you can see the salamander larva or babies inside the green eggs. There is algae, which is a plant, and jelly that the salamanders will eat to hatch out of their eggs. Oh, wow, exciting! A salamander had just hatched. In my spoon here, you're going to see a salamander that is hatched from its egg. If you look very, very closely, you can see the little gills on the side, which allows it to breathe in the water. Put him back. This red worm looking thing is actually called a midge. Midge are an aquatic insect that lives in the vernal pool and is a food source for lots of the other animals that you might find in the pool. This animal is a mosquito pupa. It's the young stage of a mosquito before it hatches out into an adult. They spend their life in water and when they go through the change called metamorphosis, they hatch out as adults into the air. They also have two antenna looking things called siphons, which they use to breathe air out of the water. They're also often called tumblers because of the way they move. Mm -hmm. okay. Mosquito larvae are also a very important food source for all living things in the vernal pool. So this creature is called a fairy shrimp. This is a mature female, and in the center of her body, you can see her eggs or her brood pouch. You're also going to see the feather-like appendages underneath their body, which they use to breathe. This animal is also a very important living thing to help filter bacteria in the vernal pool. They swim upside down, which allows them to move those appendages to get air. This guy is a diving water beetle larva, meaning it's in its younger stages. The diving water beetle larva aren't good swimmers, so they use the plants of the vertical pool to hold on to and move around at the bottom. They'll also use the vernal plants as shelter to hide from other predators as they are eaten by the other living things in the vernal pool. Vernal pools are a great habitat to support an abundance and variety of plant and animal life. But what happens to that life in the late spring and early summer when the water evaporates? Those animals lay their eggs and the eggs stay deep in the leaf litter and are fine all winter long until the next spring season comes and the pool fills again where the eggs hatch and life continues. As I return my living things to the vernal pool, I encourage you to do your own investigation of a habitat. You can go out in your backyard, to a forest, 
or even safely go to any nature or conservation walk near where you live. When you do your investigation, think about what kinds of living things are there, what plants and animals use that habitat to get everything that they need. Where do they find shelter? How do they get their air? And Don't forget to take pictures as you explore. For later on in your investigation, you will have to compare and contrast the vernal pool to your habitat exploration. Good luck and I hope you have fun. Remember, when you're doing any investigation with living things, make sure you return them back to where they belong and be kind to all living things. I hope you have a great time exploring in your habitat and I can't wait to see how your habitat compares to this vernal pool habitat. Enjoy!